So Elon Musk and Sam Altman are once again going head to head to see who's going to be controlling the AI moving forward. You might have heard this whole drama played out, but we've got a few new things happening. Number one, the letter of intent to buy OpenAI. That has been leaked, published online, and the letter has some key details that kind of reveal what's happening behind the scenes. Now, interestingly, Elon Musk's lawyers have also floated the idea that he might withdraw the offer to buy OpenAI if certain conditions are met. The whole thing is rather wild, but let's take it from the top. So the whole thing started with Elon Musk wanting to buy OpenAI for $97.4 billion. Now Sam Altman responds saying, no, thank you, but we will buy Twitter for $9.74 billion if you want. Elon Musk responds by calling him a swindler. Now, as you know, OpenAI is trying to transition some of its structure. Often it's described as transitioning for a, from a non-profit to a for-profit structure. It's a little bit more complicated than that. Sam Altman disagrees with that characterization. The nonprofit will always remain a nonprofit. But as some people point out, the move here by Elon Musk might just be to raise the valuation of the nonprofit. So if they're trying to buy those shares out, having a large offer like that on the table, you know, the board of the company has to analyze it. They have to look at it. So this is effectively kind of throwing a wrench in the works and um, inflating the value of the company, or maybe, or if not inflating, at least making sure that it's not getting sort of marked down and sort of at, at a discounted price. So with all that in mind, here's what Sam Altman said about the whole situation, about the Elon Musk, what his intentions are and why this is happening. Sam, of course, the headlines right now, Elon Musk making a bid for OpenAI. Your response, you're turning him down for 97 billion. I, I mean, look, OpenAI is not for sale. The OpenAI mission is not for sale. Elon tries also sorts of things for a long time. Uh, this is the late, you know, this week's episode. Are you take it seriously at all? What do you think he's trying to drive at with this? I think he's probably just trying to slow us down. Um, he obviously is a competitor. Uh, it's, you know, he's working hard and he's raised a lot of money for XAI and they're trying to compete with us from a technological perspective, from, you know, getting the product into the market. And uh, I wish he would just compete by building a better product, but I think there's been a lot of tact and many, many lawsuits, all sorts of other crazy stuff now this. Um, and we'll try to just put our head down and keep working. Does it make it more difficult to move from that non-profit model to that profit model? Of open AI. We're not moving to a for-profit model. We're, uh, I mean, we're not sure we're going to do it all, but no matter what, the nonprofit will continue to be extremely important. It will drive the mission. It will continue to exist. Uh, the board is looking at lots of options about how to best structure for this next phase, but the, the nonprofit is not changing in anything or going anywhere. So that's a Sam Allman's take. Now, on Elon Musk's side, his lawyers are saying that this is indeed a serious offer and it's aimed at continuing OpenAI's non-profit structure. And this proposal isn't by Elon Musk alone. It has a lot of very notable, very credible, big investors. So you have the XAI Corp, right? So Elon Musk, that's his competing AI company. You have the Baron Capital Group. You have Valor Management. And this isn't debt funded. This is a cash offer. You can see here they're saying a uh, buyer will not require third-party debt financing to be a contingency to closing the transactions, right? They're saying we don't need a bank to approve the loan for this thing. We've got the cash for it, right? So that kind of eliminates uh, another potential reason for dismissing it, right? So because it's a cash offer, it's it's right there. It's very tempting, right? So if you're a board for a you know regular for-profit company and somebody brings you a certain deal, it would be your fiduciary responsibility some in certain situations to to take that deal. If it's good for the shareholders, you kind of might have to take it. Here, obviously, it's a lot more convoluted, a lot more uh, complicated. But the big point here is that the board has to, you can't ignore it. It has to look at this offer. It's a real cash offer. And behind it are legit big players. Now, a lot of people are skeptical if Musk and partners are able to raise that much money. So Musk, I believe, spent $44 billion on his Twitter acquisition. So now he would need to raise another $100 billion to cover the cost of OpenAI, to cover the cost of this bid. That's a lot of money. Now, Elon Musk is worth something like $400 billion, but that's not necessarily like lying around in cash. That's, you know, the the worth of, of all the companies, etc. So this is an article from Reuters, so according to some analysts. So from that perspective, this could be a pressure tactic to try to slow things down, to throw a wrench in the works, to try to to just put more pressure on OpenAI and Sam Altman. This is from an article in VKTR.com. And the idea they're sort of presenting is that Elon Musk is trying to set a sort of a high floor 
the nonprofit. So that means that when the board is transitioning to the not-for-profit structure, that the company isn't shortchanged. So there were some industry reports that were saying that during this whole thing, OpenAI was putting the value of $67 million for the nonprofit. So this bid by Elon Musk, of course, raises that by an additional $30 billion. So effectively, Elon Musk is pushing up the price that everybody else would have to pay to acquire parts of OpenAI. Of course, SoftBank is also trying to invest at a different valuation. So the whole thing is complicated, and this could be Elon Musk's way to just put more pressure on OpenAI, on the investors, etc. What's interesting is recently, Elon Musk said he might be willing to just walk away from this deal. So here, Elon Musk is saying that he will withdraw his $97.4 billion bid to take over OpenAI if its board halts the planned transition to a for-profit company. So if OpenAI's board is prepared to preserve the charity's mission and stipulate to take the for sale sign off its assets by halting its conversion, Musk will withdraw the bid. And so that might have been the whole intention all along to keep it a uh, non-profit. But as Sam Altman said, of course, you got to keep in mind that uh, Elon Musk is a competitor. So this could be just, you know, him playing hardball, him just making life difficult for a competitor. So, of course, any delay could be very good for XAI, which just recently Elon Musk announced the release of the new Grok that should be coming out, he says, in a few weeks. That's supposed to be better than any of the competition. It's very, very, very powerful reasoning capabilities. Um, so... Uh, in the tests that we've done thus far, Grok 3 is outperforming anything that's been released that we're aware of. Um, so that's that's a that's a good sign. Um, it, it's uh, in fact, it, it, at times I think Grok 3 is kind of scary smart. And you're like, wow, this thing's smart. It's kind of scary. Grok 3 is scary. It's like, wow, this thing's <laughs> it's, you know it comes up with. Solutions that you didn't even think were like you, you wouldn't even anticipate, you know, not obvious solutions. Um, so Grok 3 was trained with the most amount of compute and I think very efficiently trained. Um, also notably, Grok 3 was trained on, on a lot of synthetic data. So, um, and, and, and then it, it goes back and forth through the data and, and tries to achieve logical consistency. So, so when if, if it's got data that is uh, wrong, it, it'll it'll actually reflect upon that and remove the data that is that is wrong that does not concord with reality. So its, it's base reasoning is very good. Uh, in fact, the, the even without fine tuning, Grok three the base model is better than Grok two. So with so we're we're really in the final stages of polishing Grok three. Probably it gets released in in about a week or two so pretty pretty soon and of course the other thing to keep in mind is that like all deals of this nature of this size you know you do have the due diligence so open ai would have to provide a lot of the insider access to elon musk and everybody else and of course, after doing the due diligence, they could find something to, you know, be able to back away from the deal, say, oh, we, we didn't like this, you know, we have to back away. So even if OpenAI decides to move forward with the deal, Elon Musk has the option of just like looking at everything, having a, an open look at whatever he can at OpenAI. Here they're mentioning illegal financial, you know, various tax reviews, review of the company's financial projections, key drivers of revenue, et cetera and the detailed discussions with management. So this this could be a lot, right? So the, he could get tons of information out of it. And maybe if there's something in there that he doesn't like, maybe potentially even a back away. So at the end of the day, you know, what does this mean? What's going to happen? What is Elon Musk's kind of like what game he's playing? Now, of course, nobody knows what's going to happen. But one thing I do know is I know the game that Elon's playing, that game is 4D chess or 5D chess or whatever, because as you can see, this move is very like richly strategic. Right, because if you think about it, it's his chance to potentially make a grab for you know the number one AI startup in the world. I mean, there's there's uh, some timeline, some chance of this deal having to go through, right? So if he's able to finance it, like he might get his hands on OpenAI. I'm not saying that's going to happen. I think it's probably unlikely, but I'm saying let's say there's some fraction of 1% chance, certainly that would be a win for him. If OpenAI agrees to try to go through with this, they do their due diligence. He can attempt to walk away if things don't look as, as good as they should be or, or finding some reason to attempt to walk away. So he's got a way out. 
he could potentially prevent the kind of the move away from the non-profit structure, right? So he can completely block that, which again is something that he wants. That's something to his advantage. If nothing else, right, if nothing happens, he still just raised the kind of the floor and how much OpenAI can value, you know, piece, a key piece of their sort of assets, right? So they can't say, oh, it's worth 60 billion when somebody's willing to give 97 billion for it, right? So that in of itself is going to inflate, increase the asset value. And of course, any slowdown, right, any distraction to the key players at OpenAI, any slowdown in anything, of course, plays to, once again, Elon Musk's advantage because he's a competitor. He's releasing, he's rolling out the next version of Grok. So whatever he can do to kind of uh, slow down the competition is, of course, good for his own companies. So the letter of intent does spell out a specific termination date. So this agreement gets uh, gets kind of nullified May 10th, 2025. So, or, or before, if both parties agree. But the point is that, number one, that's the deadline by which we're going to find out what's happening here with this OpenAI bid. He said the new Grok that's supposedly better than anything else on the market right now, he said will roll out in one or two weeks. And of course, that's going to be a very interesting release, right? Because they have a lot of compute. They have their Colossus compute cluster, I believe. So definitely a lot going on here. The, the competition is heating up. Let me know what you think. There's this quote, something along the lines of uh, public figures are neither angels nor demons, right? They're flawed, complex. They're they're just more and more human the, the more you get to know them, like the closer you look. I always try to keep that in mind because I don't think either Elon Musk or Sam Altman, I don't think like neither one of them is, is an angel or a demon. They're not like pure good, pure evil. They're just people like the rest of us with their own dreams, ambitions, worldviews, mental models, with their own sort of beliefs, with their own insecurities. Whatever the case here is, I think we should all just take a second to appreciate how incredible it is that we're able to see this stuff play out in such a personal way like it was never possible before when Steve Jobs got fired from Apple and stuff like that you heard about it in the newspapers or whatever but with a lot of the stuff like we're seeing uh, real time we're seeing them talking on Twitter right throwing a shade back and forth so to speak they're going on interviews and talking about what's going on we're able to look at these papers that their lawyers are filing and we're watching a lot of these very important battles kind of like take place right before our eyes. So let me know what you think. Are you team Elon, team Sam? Are you somewhere in between? Maybe you're concerned that these two big players seem to be intent on bickering and fighting instead of maybe being a little bit more sort of cooperative. What are the cases? Let me know in the comments. If you made it this far, thank you so much for watching. My name is Wes Roth and I'll see you next time.